Hey all, my name is Natalie Hallett. I am the owner of Section Group, a business to business IT and website company, and we're based in Corden South. And I would love you to watch this next episode as I'm on the online prosperity show, onwards, upwards, and forwards. Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we delve in stories from inspiring individuals who have embraced the entrepreneur spirit and achieved remarkable success. I'm your host, Prosper Tarubinga, and today we have the privilege of sitting down with a business owner, a devoted team leader, and a relentless learner who believes that every day is an opportunity for growth. Natalie, how are you doing, my love? Morning. Very well. Thank you. Yes, looking forward to this. Fantastic. Now, like I said, Natalie is a passionate entrepreneur who has not only built her own business, but has also nurtured a close-knit uh, team that actually feels like family. Her journey has been filled with moments of triumph and resilience, and she has navigated the dynamic world of technology and embraced the power of human connections. Now, we've got her here. I could talk until the cows come home about what she's done and where she's headed to. We might as well ask it from her herself. Natalie, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually um, got started with your business. Well, so I was traveling here nearly 12 years ago and um, I met somebody and after six weeks of saying good day and spending time in Australia, we went to England for five weeks. I sold everything and I emigrated so 11 weeks and uh, it was a whirlwind and after we landed I landed here um, Section Technologies was born four days later so it registered the business name and basically the last 12 years uh, or 11 years was growing Section Technologies an IT company based in Boyden South um, doing business to business IT and we did some home user IT. We basically just got out into the community. I knew no one. So it was a really cool way for me to go out, meet people, build some friends and a business. Um, and then about a year, yeah, coming up a year ago, Section Group was born. So Section Group um, is now Section Technologies and Section Media, Section Communications, Section Hosting, and soon to be Section uh, Community, which will be a homeless hub we're going to build. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations on the growth and everything else. It has been um, obviously a whirlwind of activity and having come to Australia, knowing no one and creating something of your own. Um, what's with the affiliation with the name section? Because everything that you have created is has got section in it. Uh, well, that was um, when I first emigrated, as I met someone, we started the business together back then. And that was his brainchild. He always wanted to do sections of technology and um, section technologies was the, the primary business. Um, and then when I took it over two years ago, I started to form section group by building up different parts of the business that could um, form when you see our logo, you'll understand. Um, it's a diamond and it's got separate areas on it. And now we're growing section media, which is websites and digital marketing, section communications, which is VoIP telephony, section hosting, hosting websites and virtual private service. And then the last one, my baby, I suppose, which will be mine and section groups legacy will be section community, which we hope to launch within the next 18 months to two years, um, which will be to buy properties and renovate them and get the homeless off the streets and into employment through training them and giving them experience within our group so they can go out and get other jobs. So it's a huge project that's being planned in the background, ready for when I can step out of this a little bit more and leave my two IC and my team to run. And I can spend two or three days a week building up the community project. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited though. <laughs> two I know. years seems a long way away, but it's been 12 so far. So what's two more? 
Oh, fantastic. And I really love that you have done a selfless uh, endeavor. Now you're going into the community and things of that nature. But all of that hasn't happened, um, you know, just through your sheer hard work and applying yourself. You've had a team that has worked um, behind you. And one of the things that uh, anybody would notice if they jump on your LinkedIn is how you emphasize team, team, team. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about your team and the importance of teamwork in your business? Yeah. Look, I I run a business from what I'm learning a little differently to others. Um, The transparency with my team is, well, it's completely transparent. They have access to my profit and loss. They get to see the balance sheet. We share everything across the whole team the numbers the the goal planning the hiring you know if i'm gonna employ someone i get the people in that team to come and interview them because they're gonna work with them you know it's not just me um there's 10 of us uh so will has been with me nine years now so he's my two ic he is fantastic in my absence if i'm off with my kids or on holiday he runs everything um the whole group um and then we have matt and james who are the managers of two of the other Um, businesses and uh, Will manages section tech and then we have a team of um, web developers, digital marketers, IT experts, security, cyber security experts so and they all work in this office they're all collaborative so although they're very very skilled and trained in their own areas so if you're a web dev you know web you may not know IT they can go and sit and talk to each other and see how what one might do in one area in space might affect the company in another way. And that collaboration and that growth of each other is, I personally believe, what is helping this company grow very quickly. Fantastic. And congratulations, <laughs> congratulations on that. Because Thanks, in, Af- in Africa, we've got a uh, saying that says, if you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further... You go together and it does look like there's a lot of harmony and uh, synergies in the team that you have created. So kudos uh, for you for doing that. But you also mentioned, you know, that learning new skills and techniques is usually really critical to you and your team, because, you know, if they're not learning new things and if they're not growing, then obviously they are not helping with the, um, you know, the whole essence of teamwork. Now, how do you, prioritize personal and professional uh, sort of development in your daily work routine? It is a good question uh, and it's balance and every single business owner that's listening to this, you're going to feel my pain. Um, You've got to weigh up pay time that you are willing to invest in their learning. So with us, one of our biggest, um, most of our business clients have moved to us because they don't get the proactive support from their current IT teams. And we can be proactive because my team are staying up to date. They know, uh, Will went to a, um, uh, I think it was Asus or something like that, a conference the other day to go and sit with the um, manufacturers and go, okay, what's coming out? What's the new technology? How is that going to affect our clients, et cetera? So it's really important they do that. And for myself as a business owner, honestly, I'm a teacher. So my background, I've been a teacher and assessor for uh, years in England before I emigrated. And I've even just started um, to look at a course myself in understanding our financials even better. And that's a TAFE course. And it's like, I'm 41, (laughs) 42 this year. And I'm going to go back to TAFE online and go, okay, how do I keep learning? Because if I learn, I can disseminate that to my team and they're all looking at the TAFE courses as well. And if we can enroll them and somehow get that balance of time within the workplace, but it's also having teams that want, as you said, the African saying, they want the business to go far. So therefore they do some of it in their own time. And it is an expectation from me that they develop their own skills in their own time. And I help them develop on work time. And then the collaboration means we grow you know, and their job security is even higher and their pay rises are better and the clients get a better technician or web developer, you know, everyone wins in my opinion. Absolutely. No, by maintaining, um, you know, all of that with teams, that requires some level of transparency because they need to know where they're going. They need to know what's actually going to be, um, you know, happening you know, to them. And the fact that you're also taking, you know, part in learning a lot more things um, 
you know, so that you can actually uh, grow your business. Now, from what I'm hearing, you've, you have even told us your age, which basically means transparency seems to be the core value for you. How do you incorporate this transparency within your business operations, such as maybe sharing that financial information and the fact that that's what you're going out to learn and also really involving your team in this decision making process? It's just being open. Um, I don't hide anything from them because honestly, I think that's what's going to bite you in the butt if you do. Um, and if I'm trying to battle something and if they're on board with it and they know where the bus is heading and they know where I'm heading and they know my values and ethics, they are, and they're completely in line with those. Hence, when we hire, we don't necessarily hire for skill. We hire for who they are. We can train anybody in a skill. It's nice if they've got some of those skills because it's not an endless bottom of money to support them, but it's really important that their culture aligns. And then like with clients, I'm very transparent with them. We signed up a new client. Um, they're very careful on cost of hardware. And, you know, they were very sort of open with me and went, well, you know, are your markups high? And I went, they're 30%. I'll be very open with you. I, I don't care. I can tell you that right now because we have to not only know your business, know what hardware you need. We order in all the parts. We make sure you're on the latest chipsets. We remove any bloatware on the machines when we get them. We set you up with antiviruses. The value in that 30% is you've got a team providing you with something and it's completely what you're going to need. Or, as I very bluntly said, you can go to our high street store, you know, to a shopping center. I'm not going to name any, but you can go to some. You can get some very basic trained team members in those stores who know nothing about your business and your IT requirements who will sell you a computer. And their job is based on trying to sell you the most expensive thing in the store, which, of course, they get commission, good on them, but it might not be what you need. And so, therefore... If they see that value in the 30% that I charge on top of the hardware to do all the ordering, get it all in, check it all, make sure it's bench tested, it works, and it's fit for purpose, then they buy through us. But what we do say to them is if you don't see that value on the hardware, not a problem. Go buy your own computers, laptops, whatever it is, and we will still have them come into us and we'll set you up and your team up or whoever it's for and link them to your server. So they have complete right to go whichever way they want we don't say no you have to buy it through us and and that transparency is i believe why we've retained clients for 10 or 11 years and we very rarely ever get any leavers oh absolutely if you're going to be dealing with people's it and you know their means uh or, or of production then obviously they need to know exactly what's actually happening you know to their work and everything else now natalie when you started answering this question you mentioned um, you know, a statement that I thought we were actually going to stop recording. You said something will come and bite you in the butt. And then I then remembered you actually went and swam with great white sharks and petted wild crocodiles. Yeah. <laughs> that must have been a very incredible experience. Can you actually just share a bit more about those <laughs> encounters and what you actually took away from them? And so I've lived a life, okay, as I said, I'm nearly 42. I am a very big believer in not doing things that are stupid, but pushing your own boundaries. So when I was first over here on holiday, um, my, uh, I think it's like my second cousin, he decided to book me a surprise trip. <laughs> and we flew um, to just north of Adelaide and I'm looking at the boats and I'm looking at the cages and I'm like, what are we about to do? And he's like, we're going great white diving and I'm like we're what like are you kidding me you know my father I phoned England my father's having heart palpitations basically saying to my second cousin you better bring her back alive you know and it was the most exhilarating terrifying confronting thing that I've done um especially in the ocean like it, it there's so many things that could or couldn't happen and actually the large female decided, I don't think she liked me. She, as I was climbing out the cage, she rammed at the cage and smashed the cage against the boat. So a huge gap formed. And all I remember is two guys going, grab her belt. So you, you wear a belt that's weighted down. So if you go in that water, you're sinking. Um, but it's hard to hold you down in the cage. And the two guys just grabbed the weighted belt and dragged me onto the boat. And I remember my feet going through the water and I'm just thinking, I'm going to die. Like, this is nuts. But 
it was so um it was so much fun as well once I was on the boat obviously I was much happier um and it just kind of made me feel out of my comfort zone and I guess yeah I lived through that once before so when I was in Africa we um were over there doing a project and the villagers wanted to thank us and they took us on a trip to a water hole and they said to all of us you know look down at the water and we're looking down and all these little heads are popping up of these crocodiles or alligators forgive me I have no idea years ago but I think the crocodiles and all down the banks is quite rocky and you could see different crocodiles just hanging out sunbathing and the village elder said well you know I've blessed the water hole and I've asked them not to harm you so if you'd like to go and pat them feel free and I'm like I don't think that this is saying I've got to be honest like the wild animals but okay and a few of the other people went and did it and I'm and even my auntie went and did it for me and my father and I stood there because we went it's a family charity project in Africa that we do and um I decided okay we'll do it so we go down and Usman an amazing guy from the Gambia who's one of our contacts over there he's got this really big stick and he walks down with me and he's like and I all that's going through my head is if they're not going to attack me, why do we need the stick? And he's like, just in case. And I'm like, oh, okay, just in case. So I've got photos of me crouched down, patting the crocodile. <laughs> and then it moved and I ran back up the hill. I'm not going to lie. It was terrifying. I'm, yeah, it was, it was nuts. But again, that was their way of thanking us. And it was so memorable. Why would you not? You know, what's worst is going to happen? I'm going to have a memory of being eaten by a crocodile, right? Fantastic. Yeah. You've, you've <laughs> lived quite the life right there. I mean, obviously, yeah. all, all your journeys with the white sharks and uh, ending up patting the, the crocodile. Maybe when you were watching uh, Crocodile Dundee, you were just thinking, oh, you know, this is the kind of stuff that. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally the same. Totally. The same. I've got this. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's nuts it's nuts <laughs> fantastic all right so so you obviously have had this journey you've immigrated to australia you've started this business from scratch and it's all been quite impressive can you just maybe share with us some of the challenges that you may have faced during this yeah. journey and 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 how you actually overcame them so there there some other challenges okay so when you start up a business, everyone starts one knows the challenges of cash flow versus your work time and your lifetime. And we just threw everything at it. We got our first employee seven months into the business and we just went for it. And I always believed that our hardest thing in business would be to get sales, to get new clients. And for two years, I believed that. And then when I started up a charity here in Australia, I got a board of business people together that I had met in that first year and a half. And uh, one lady, I'm sure she won't mind me mentioning it, Donna, she's from an amazing design co uh, company called Lateral Building Design. I just profoundly, for 10 years, remember her saying, oh, no, dear, clients are not going to be your biggest issue. Staff will. HR, it is your biggest thing as a business owner. And I was like, nah. Now, how can that possibly be my biggest um, thing to have to manage? Well, of course, I only had one member of staff and the two of us running it. And all right, look, going over that now, when I've got a team of 10 and somebody's off sick while somebody's overseas and somebody now wants to work from home or somebody's kids are sick or whatever it is, yeah, I completely agree with her. Like trying to manage a team and make sure that your team are happy versus you've got cover for your clients and they're happy with your team versus hiring new team and making sure that when they come in, they're completely engaged with your culture and your ethics and your values. That in itself is, yeah, that's probably my biggest feedback to anyone is look after your team and they'll look after you. If they're not on board, they're not the right fit. And I thank Donna for giving me that advice every time I see her. Fantastic. Because if your team and the people that you're working with are playing ball, then they will definitely, you know, help you build what you have built. And congratulations for being <laughs> there. Um, and obviously with the transparency that we spoke about earlier, 
it is something that you've actually mastered, um, you know, to the core. Now, if um, people are really excited about, you know, your adventurous antics and everything else that you've been up to and they're looking for ways that maybe they can get to know more about what you do and, um, you know, how to get a hold of you or maybe work with you, what would be the best way that uh, people can get a hold of you there, Natalie? Okay, we have a main number. Anyone can call us on that. Um, so it's 3 5703 And if they press zero for our new inquiries, myself or my 2IC will answer. And they can always get hold of me. I'm one of those people that gives my mobile number out. So, you know, if they uh, if they want to contact me by phone, have a chat, do that. If not, the other best way, guys, I have small children. I have a nearly six-year-old and a seven-year-old. I'm not always on the phone 24-7. And if I am, you're going to hear Power Rangers in the background. So if you want to just communicate with me, actually, my preferred method is email. So just email me. And it's natalie, N-A-T-A-L-I-E, at sectiongroup.com.au. And I am checking that every day. You know, even when I'm on annual leave, I say I'm not. My retire, return message will say, I'm not looking at this. I'm generally looking at this. So, you know, communicate with me. I love meeting other entrepreneurs. I've helped a friend of mine, which I'm sure she went, I'm saying she wanted to set up her own business in beauty. I have never done a day in business in beauty. I don't know it, but I know that the core running of a business is the same. So I went out, we went through her numbers. I helped to go and negotiate a purchase, get a shop front. And her business is now running three years on and she's slamming it. If I can help anybody in any which way, you just want to chat about how your business is going, where you're at and want a bit of advice or you're looking for business IT support or a website. I mean, quick plug or digital marketing, you know, or VoIP telephones. Come and talk to me. I'm an open book. We quote for free. Our chats are for free. And then if we're the right fit, both ways, I've got to like you too, <laughs> then we can, you know, take you guys on and work with you. And we like preferably staying local. So within Victoria, you know, helping each other, knowing that this is our community. Fantastic. And I'm hoping that, you know, from this, a lot of people will definitely reach out and want to learn more about, you know, how you um navigated you know this whole shark infested or crocodile infested journey of um entrepreneur entrepreneurship now natalie if i'm to say um you know introduce you to uh somebody who is sort of just getting started in business they haven't had the exposure of um sharks or <laughs> crocodiles they haven't really seen any sort of loss you know in in the magnitude that you probably have and also created something of their own what sort of advice would you give to somebody who's getting started in business and um they're just maybe um hoping that they would become a success one day look i am a big believer that nothing's a mistake um, a bad mistake is if you didn't learn from it if you literally just brush it off and you don't sit back and go yeah that didn't go right and even after 12 years just this past year i made a mistake i made a decision in business that um you know we wanted to open up a second office and build another team over there and my learning was that was the wrong decision right now. I, I separated the team up and that doesn't work for our culture. Um, but I learned from that. And as long as you can learn from it, and then I have actually tattooed across my arm here, onwards, upwards and forwards. And that's how I live. As you say, I've, I've lived through a few losses in life. Um, we've all got a story. And every time I um, hit a wall, I go for a walk personally, find your own way. I wouldn't suggest alcohol or drugs, but find your own way. For me, it's walking, get some fresh air, listen to some music, think through the issue, learn from it. And then onwards, upwards and forwards, find a way forward because 12 years in business does not come easy. We've had ups and downs, you know, and, and that's okay as long as you can find a new path or push down the same path. And my biggest advice, as soon as you're big enough and you have a little bit of cash flow, is get the team around you. So my accountant, my CFO, my business coach, and my broker are my four biggest assets um, to sit and give me, you know, absolute expert advice at board meetings. And we sit there and we go through our numbers, we go through our goals and to have their opinions. I make the decisions, but to have their opinions um, as other business owners around me it's invaluable, invaluable. The last two years, we've grown 42% purely because I've got this team on board. We're working collaboratively. 
and we're all on the same path, as I said earlier. And then my team sit in on those meetings. Will, my two IC, he's at every financial meeting. You know, he's got to know where we're heading. And then in our smaller team meetings, share, share it with your team. Make them feel that everything they do every day is helping the company go in the right direction. You know, That's you know, nice. Natalie. Natalie, we could just sit around here because I'm really enjoying listening to your British accent here. And you, I, I, I hope yeah. you're not going to be sending us a bill, um, you know, <laughs> to charge us for. Well, okay. this is business. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you do get paid for it, right? For? Your voice. At work? Yes. Oh, my voice. Yes, I actually do voice recordings for the clients on our VoIP telephone systems for them. So when I phone people up and I go, oh, that's me. Oh, oh, that's my voice. You know, and, you know there's probably 15, 20, maybe more uh, businesses with my voice doing all of their recordings for their company now. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I'm glad yeah. we had to, <laughs> we, we got to enjoy it um, for free. But for those that are watching right now, onwards, upwards and forwards. I can't thank you, Natalie, enough for, you know, gracing us with your, um, you know, presence on the show today and really, really taking us through this journey that you have, um, you know, taking us on. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Like when, uh, when I was recommended to talk to you, I didn't know what it's about. I did tell you that. And this has been easy and a pleasure. And if we can help anyone out there, let's help. Fantastic. Well, Thank you for joining us on the Online Prosperity Show. And we've explored the incredible journey of Natalie, an entrepreneur who is truly embodied in the principles of teamwork, continuous learning, and building meaningful relationships and her passion and her resilience and commitment to personal and professional growth have actually led her to build a thriving business and especially with a close, neat team. I hope you've been inspired by Natalie's story and the lessons that she's shared with us. Remember that success is not achieved alone, but through the power of a dedicated team and a thirst for knowledge and genuine connections with others. Now, Help me to thank Natalie again for this time that we've spent uh, today and also gracing us with her beautiful, beautiful British um, accent right there. So I want you to join us next time on the Online Prosperity Show, where we continue to uncover the stories of individuals who have embraced this entrepreneurial spirit and achieved prosperity in the digital realm. Until then, keep striving for growth and success. And in the words of the best English person I've had in a very long time, Onwards, upwards, and forwards. Bye for now.